Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our session this afternoon, um, Streamlining with Assemble and Plan Grid. My name is Chris Palmer, and I am a Technical Solutions Executive with Autodesk Construction Solutions. And um, just to give you a little bit of background on myself, so I am an RSS Chartered Building Surveyor by trade, and I've uh, worked with ACS for about the last year. Before that, I um, worked for a large manufacturer of digital uh, laser scanning equipment. Um, and have about 12 years industry experience as a, as a building surveyor, working as a project manager um, and an architectural designer on projects. So today I'm going to take you through an um, uh, overview of our, of our Assemble platform and our plan grid platform. But first of all, I just want to kind of set the scene a little bit in terms of um, what we have as an offering within the Autodesk Construction Cloud and how these products sort of fit together and speak to each other. So our approach at um, ACS is really to look at your processes and look at, first of all, digitizing those manual processes. So if you think about things like paper on site, is that, is that a common one? Or things like just manual communication techniques, such as just phone calls, those types of things, which are not tracked. Digitizing some of those information flows um, so that we can then start to look at how we can, at the end, leverage things like optimization and, and insight. So for digitization is the first step. Once we've done that, we look at how we can integrate with your business solutions. So you will already have a lot of um, software within your organization. We, we understand we can't provide a solution for every single um, possible business application. And so what we need to do is obviously integrate the best we can with those tools. So integrating with those tools through, through API connections, but also actually integrating with the business processes and data flows as well. So we digitize, we integrate, and then what we look to do is optimize the way that we're working. So we can then start to take things like those tasks issues and things that are reported on site and maybe look at how we can use AI and machine learning to actually optimize and provide insight into what's actually going on on your projects and an organization wide level. So that's the approach that we're taking with these tools. Um, you can see we've obviously been very strong for a long time in the design space with design authoring tools and, and collaboration tools. So really with this platform, what we're looking to do is move more and more into the plan, build and operate phases of the life cycle of an asset. And you can see some of the applications that we're talking about and workflows we're talking about, which are covered by some of um, some of them covered by Assemble and Plan Grid, which we'll look at later. Um, in terms of things like, you know, quantification, 3D estimating, also the use of the use of um, collaborative tools on site, field collaboration. So, and what we find is that obviously with, with models and things and drones that are generated in the design phase, a lot of that information can be lost through the construction uh, phase. And particularly if you think about the metadata within a BIM model, for example, what we want to be able to do is use that information, that, that rich data that's been generated at the start of the process, all the way through the life cycle and use that on site, use that in the, in the operations phase. And so the things that we've discussed there, so models, drawings, issue specifications, RFIs, cost, all these things, sharing that information throughout the, the life cycle and, and making seamless connections between the, between the different data endpoints. And obviously, as we, as we do that, we can then start to build those insights and analytics on top of that. So the tools within the Autodesk Construction Cloud are uh, Assemble, which we're going to look at now um, in terms of conditioning the model, adding extra data into the model, breaking it down into uh, different bid packages, for example, tender packages to allow us to do takeoffs and things like that. So Assemble, we have Building Connected, which is um, launched very soon, um, uh, launched very soon in the uh, UK market. So we can start to look at that a little bit more detail, but it's, it's obviously a tender based platform. Um, where we can obviously look at um, sending these designs and sending these tender packages out and having people actually connect with us and, and tender directly live through the platform. So, so it's a really exciting um, new application that we've got coming. BIM360 has been around for a little bit longer um, in terms of our sort of central CDE and central data hub. And then Plan Grid, which we're going to look at today, this nice, simple, powerful and effective site-based tool for, for collaboration and use of use of data on site. So, so that's the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And as I said before, they're looking at really connections between these platforms and how we can move that data seamlessly between them, but also with our AEC design products. So you can see we obviously have things like AutoCAD, Revit, Navisworks, Civil 3D, rather than maybe PDF and a drawing, email it to somebody who then prints it out and takes it to site. What if we could just seamlessly push the model from the authoring tool to the field-based tool? and allow them to use 
digital handoffs, data handoffs, and obviously use that digital site data as well. So, so that's the type of thing we're looking at in terms of how we connect this construction cloud. One thing that I did just want to flag up here was um, was about the sort of digital transformation ladder or journey that we we try to take our customers on with these products. So. Just to add further depth, maybe to that first slide where we looked at digitize, optimize, and integrate and optimize. So you can see here, like level one, basic sort of document management, and basic document and data management, and document control as a sort of introductory first steps to, and to this. Once we've done that, we can obviously look at how maybe we can start to digitize the workflows on site and enable the field to actually um, collaborate and communicate with us um, directly. So those first two steps. And then once we've done that also, maybe how we standardize the data connection. So things like the types of issues that you're flagging up, the types of tasks you're flagging up through PlanGrid, and how that reports. Also the checklists and the, the, the report types that you're using, how we can standardize that data collection and how we can standardize things like the fields and the, the non-conformances. And then that also enables us to then move to the next step, once we've done that in terms of integrating with the wider platforms and finally, using those predictive analytics from that standardized data we've collected. So this is the kind of ladder where we're taking our customers on as a kind of benchmark to give you some information. We think the industry standard is around about level two, level three from the market research that we've done. So this is where we're trying to aim to. And in terms of the actual construction cloud itself and how that kind of comes together, you can see obviously BIM 360 Docs is our sort of central hub. And we do want to have information contained within there. Um, all of our sort of data as a sort of data endpoint, but what we can then do is sort of build out workflows around this using some of the other Autodesk construction solution uh, cloud tools. So for field collaboration, we have options for PlanGrid, you have options for BIM 360 build. I'll touch upon that maybe later on, but also in terms of the, of the model coordination, the quantification and the estimating, and also all the way through to the procurement stage as well with building connected. So this is just an overview of how the sort of workflows can look and how the, the tools can connect to each other to give us a sort of end-to-end -end design to operate um, workflow. One thing that we need to, to be able to do that is these open APIs. So moving data between platforms within our solutions, but also outside, outside of our solutions. So, so many of you will probably have heard of Autodesk Forge before, which is obviously the, the BIM 360 API. We also have something called ACC Connect, which we'll look at on the next slide, which enables to build out some additional links. But with Forge, for example, we're able to uh, to, to connect data from BIM 360 um, using um, third-party applications that have been developed by 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 partners, um, or also custom applications that people can develop themselves. And this is just an example of some of those applications that are available in terms of data flow and data transfer with others business solutions. However, with ACC Connect, what we can do, just move myself out of the way there a second, um, is also then provide um, a, a sort of out of the box, no code solution to allow you to build out your own custom links. So we really try to provide something that allows you to connect. Maybe it's something like SharePoint to plan grid. You want the, the data to publish directly from SharePoint, and uh, stored within SharePoint, published directly to plan grid, that type of thing. And we can look at how we can build out those links between different solutions. So something that is available. What we're going to do now is look at um, Autodesk Assemble. So this is the main part of our presentation now. So Assemble really fits within what we would say probably the, the plan phase. If we're talking about design, plan, build and operate. And um, that's where we kind of maybe put that in terms of its positioning. And Assemble also really fits nice and neatly between some of the other solutions that we do offer, particularly I would say for sort of the model conditioning elements and model quantification. Um, and that's kind of the main tools that we have with Assemble. There is an, there's an iPad app available for Assemble to allow you to take this data to the field as well. And um, so anything that's done within this phase isn't lost. It can be handed off to the, uh, upper, uh, the construction phase as well. Um, so you can see that where that kind of sits. And if you think about what Assemble really does, it, it, it takes that design model where we might have maybe two, three, four different engineering teams working on a, a, a design model and allows it to be used then in construction because those three or four models that have been created may not actually sort of represent maybe the actual way we're going to tender this project and the way we're physically going to build this project. So 
our structural model may be broken down between different groundworks contractors. We may have um, a concrete contractor who's going to do some of the, the, the sort of concrete work and groundworks, but whereas we might need to then strip out some like the steel work to go to our fabricators, um, and, and, and and onwards and onwards. So in terms of maybe MEP, um, air conditioning units and things, maybe or air handling units and that type of system, maybe maybe one contractor, whereas we've got a completely separate electrical contractor. And so what we do is we take this data that's already measured, okay, it's already built and it's already been created with, with geometry that we can harness for measurement, and we then break it down into different sections. We can add additional data into that to allow us to, to quantify and view it in different ways. So for example, one thing might be maybe something like an NRM code, for, for costing, we can start to break this down via NRM code. We can also then start to colorize the data in different ways to, to view it and, and, and condition how it looks and make it available to the site team as well. So taking that design model, breaking it down into multiple construction models or construction breakdown um, tender packages. And then obviously we're looking at how we can then push that down and produce an estimate from that as well. One thing we do also have, is um, change analysis within here as well. So, so once we've done those quantifications and done those takeoffs from the uh, from the basic model, we can actually analyze change between variations of the model. So, if we go and bring in a new version of the model, um, obviously with the unique IDs of the um, tools of the um, 3D model, we can then analyze what's changed, maybe what's removed. It's kind of similar to something that we can do in BIM 360. However, we're adding the addition of quantities to this as well. So all of the work that you've done to condition your model in the first place um, isn't, isn't lost. You can, you can make benefit of that when it comes to actually adding a revision or a variation to this and very, very quickly then price up changes to a design or quantify changes to a design very quickly. Um, and what we also have here as a key workflow is work in place tracking. So once we've done this cost in element of the 3D model, we can then move it to something like the mobile app where we can then start to report on progress. So if we add data fields in such as, um, you know, installation status, plan start date, plan finish date, those types of things, we can even pull data from things like Primavera using some of our schedule integration um, tools. And we can then start to look at cost versus progress and get a kind of four dimensional view of that and even to a five dimensional view in, in something like Power BI where we can report on cost versus progress as well. So really nice tools um, to enable us to do that. So let's have a little bit of a look at this now. I'm just going to go and have a look at how we might get data in in the first place to the actual system. So, so our main port of call in terms of getting data into um, Autodesk Assemble is via maybe something like Revit, Navisworks or AutoCAD or Civil 3D. So we have a, an app that, or we have a, a plugin, sorry, that we can we can install inside Revit or Renavisworks, which enables us to co connect directly to the system. And then we can actually push our data directly from the authoring tool into the cloud. You'll also notice here um, that what it's able to do is then take the sheets with it as well. So it's not just a 3D model that we're taking up. We are able to take up those different versions of the different sheets as well. So we can actually do an analysis, you know, based on versions, based on the sheets as well and see what's different. So once we publish that there, there is also a bi-directional link here. So what's really nice is if you have a, an empty parameter or an empty field within Revit, within your Revit model, that obviously will be published as a field that is empty to assemble. And if it was the case that we needed to update this data within the cloud or even from site, um, then that data is hosted within the model. and We do have a sync back function that allows you to pull any parameters back from the cloud to your Revit model to give you that kind of as-built BIM or that data um, hosted within a sort of as-built situation. So, so that's something that's possible. We have got an export for Navisworks search sets. You'll just see at the bottom there on the left-hand side. So in terms of Navisworks, we can push search sets back that can be helpful for some things like 4D timeline and things like that as well. Um, however, it's really mainly with Revit in terms of the sort of parameter sync back. So depending on the type of model you want to take into Assemble, um, there's a few different options and a few different ways we can do that. As I mentioned there, so we do obviously have the, the two-dimensional capability in terms of the sheets if we are publishing from Revit and in terms of the view that you will see when you log into assemble or you open up a project what we have in the center here is our inventory 
And so it takes all of those model elements and breaks them down into a list and an inventory, which can then be quantified. We can change the measurements or change the unit types for all of the different element types so that we can align to maybe a WBS standard from that local region. So obviously in the UK, we use NRM1. We report things like steel work in tonnage. However, in some countries, they might re report that in meters squared, meters cubed, sorry. So depending on what you want to do, you can quantify uh, in different ways. But what it also allows us to do, as you can see on the screen there, is organize the data in different ways. So any of the additional parameters and things that we've built into the model, we can then start to actually group our data, and group and select our data and colorize our data based on those parameters, either from the Revit model or the, the design model or from the assembled properties that we're starting to build in as well. And so it's a really nice functionality to allow you to do that. And we have a bi-directional or a, 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 a link between these three windows here. So, so if we select an element with the inventory, it highlights within the 2D and the 3D, vice versa, if we select from any of those sheets. So it just enables us to get, get in and view the data in, in nice, nice and robust ways. Um, I mentioned about the NRM structure and, and applying that to um, uh, an actual model when we're doing our costing. You can see here what we have is something called data trees, which is the functionality that we have to do this. You can um, import your own data tree. So we have templates where you can create your own WBS data tree to bring into the system and quantify your uh, model in different ways. You can see we've got things already built out, just, just examples that we've done as a technical team, so NRM1, NRM2. But what we find is the more we talk to people outside of the UK, the more they want their own either company standard data tree or work breakdown structure, or maybe a, a countrywide standard as well. And by doing this now, what we can do is start to assign those codes specifically to the elements. So you can see, for example, here with the concrete floors, we can then start to quantify in a particular way and group our data in a particular way. What's really nice is with the view capabilities we have here, we can start to actually see or, or maybe make an element vanish if it's, if it's actually categorized because we can actually group or, or set the rules of the view to, um, to specifically only show us things that have been categorized. And so we can work through the model, start to condition it and add the data in and obviously have um, um, a, a sort of view that's based around that to, to enable us to do that and help us to do that. So that's kind of lead me on to the next slide, which is about visibility settings. So if you see here now, if I go to the, my left-hand side and go to the model tree area, we can turn models on and off. So we can have federated views or individual model views. But what we can do then is start to use some of the, the data to completely categorize the view. So if I've got, for example, um, a design model with, you can see concrete and steel here, for example, very quickly I can create a rule for the entire view that says uh, only show me something that has the, the, the title structural framing from the category field or structural columns. And the reason this is really important is because when we do this, actually what will happen is when we upload a new version of the model, the rules still apply. And so it will automatically start to filter out data and speed up that process of, of measuring the, the changes because it's already removing aspects that, that we don't want. So all of the work you've done in your initial quantification isn't lost and can be built upon and used again. And as you can see here now, all of these different data fields down the right hand side, we're able to populate or, or create our own create our own fields. So we can start to add things like you can see it's got plan start date, plan finish date and things in there as well. We can add that data in or those data fields in and then view the data in all kinds of different ways. As I mentioned before, we can start to colorize this data then. So once we have done that kind of initial grouping and, and, and worked worked around things here, we can start to group by property. So if you think about, we're using bid package here, okay? Bid package is the, is the one we're gonna use. So we're gonna colorize and, and, and basically group our data in the inventory via the response to the field bid package. And then we're gonna colorize that data based on that as well. So we can very quickly see um, what is and what isn't within a particular grouping. Why this is important is because when we save these views, these views are available on the mobile device in the exact same form that they are created in here, even down to the way the inventory is grouped. 
And so to make data accessible on site for somebody to maybe update something like installation progress or something like that, for work in place tracking, then we might want to maybe create a status field called installation status, colorize them red, green, amber for um, installed, in progress, not commenced, something like that, and then save the data and make it visible in that way so that somebody on the mobile app could then go in, update those particular fields, see a, a colorized change in the data and um, and obviously in the 3D model. And, um, and obviously it just makes things a lot easier to use um, when we're actually updating statuses from site. So that's a nice bit of functionality that we do have um, within the product as well. We have a lot of different customers who use this in different ways. So for example, some people look at things like uh, carbon data within 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 a model, you know, co uh, embodied carbon, CO2 footprints and things like that. We can start to use the colorization to really group um, and start to uh, differentiate elements based on, on any type of data you could imagine. So it's a really nice tool to have. I mentioned about the model comparison, and obviously when we've set this view up initially, a lot of the work would already be done, but you can see here, just by using the show changes button, what I'm able to do is actually quickly see anything that's been added, removed, um, changed maybe if the actual type has changed, but the, but the actual instance ID had stayed the same, for example. We can filter between those different elements. There is some good tools within the 3D um, navigation here to allow us to actually, as you can see, um, ghost in the, pre the surrounding model so we can see where is this data how that, that's changed or where is these model elements that have changed and what we can do also is then export that if we want to as a, a Microsoft Excel sheet and then we can obviously use that as part of our estimate so we've got a very quick way of, of modeling or measuring change within models um, and it's not just one model to, to the other model as you can see we've got version 8 against version 7 there if you want to go back and compare against version 1 2 3 that's obviously possible as well so we can we can sort of monitor change throughout the design process as well if we if we need to and and cost as we go in terms of connections to bim 360 what we do have with assemble is the ability to attach documents to model elements so if you think about maybe um, some technical data or something like that or even maybe something like a photograph if you want to be able to help your your estimating team to um to understand the model you have a link here to uh, bim360 so we can link directly to bim360 docs and enable them to access data within there and then if they want to then go and tag elements directly against the model elements um, or tag information directly against the model elements so that then they can you know quickly get access to documents and view information we can see here we can open them up directly within bim3 uh, within assemble view document and it will actually show you that document what we can also do here is send issues back into bim360 so remember bim360 being our sort of central information hub all of the data is flowing back into there then from assemble if we had a maybe a design issue that we've noticed okay we've got some kind of problem that we've noticed in terms of the design, we can actually flag up an issue that can be tracked within the BIM 360 platform. These currently just come through as design issues, but I actually think that's sufficient because that's actually the way that they probably should should come back. Um, so we can flag that up as, as something that's been maybe incorrectly modeled and then it could be corrected and reviewed as part of a design review process and as part of our issue tracking within BIM 360. So nice functionality to enable sort of connection of the, of the systems. I mentioned about the mobile app. So this is how the mobile app looks. Just to be aware, currently this is only available on iOS. So it is an iOS mobile app. But as you can see here, the way we structure our views and data is mimicked exactly the same on the mobile tool, which is a great function because that means that people aren't having to search around models for the information they need. They're not having to search around views. They can have a view prepared for them that's nice and easy to use. Open up the app, quickly update some data, close it down, everything synced back to the cloud. You can work offline here um, and sync the data back subsequently if you need to. Um, but you can see here, you can get in and actually view the actual properties as well. So where we've created this Revit model that was a, a really rich rich information model um, and normally having a disconnect between you know the site now, what we can now do is view model parameters directly on the mobile tool on site, which is which can be helpful.
and even update blank fields as well if we want to and add data into that which could be synced back to the model there is a there is a timeline and function on here as well so we can do some sort of basic timelining and, and 4d sequencing linked linked to any uh, dates and things we have within within our plan start date plan finish date and um, we can also obviously like i say link that from primavera it's not a 4d scheduling tool the same way you would think about navis works in terms of timelining and, and sequencing but it does allow us to do a sort of click through um, and, and sort of quick look at a sequence of how the elements work against the uh, program so it's more of a site-based tool for, for quick sequencing. I mentioned there in terms of our link to Primavera, so there are some particular plugins we do have uh, for different tools, um, such as our Excel connector. We've got some Power BI dashboards as well, but one thing that's really quite popular um, in terms of connecting time and, and, and program data into the model, it's our schedule integrator. So schedule integrator is literally gonna allow you to sit Primavera P6 side by side with Assemble, multi-select activity activities ids and instance ids from the from the model and link the two together so we've got this dynamic link and obviously as the as the um program changes we can sync those data fields back across again and sync that data back across so we've got an updated live link if we need it and um, you can see all we're doing here now is taking sort of activity ids and, and linking them to particular instances so there's a bit of setup in the first instance but having this side by side view and this integration this integrated view really is helpful in terms of mapping data across the different elements. And one thing that is incredibly powerful, I would say probably one of the one of the best functions that we do have with Assemble is the ability to strip data from the from the cloud directly into Excel in any manner that you want. So what we have here is something called Excel Connector. It literally allows us to set a connection to a model or a view or an instance or like a version of a view and map data fields. So if I want to set a key, for example, here, we're using category name as the key. Often we'll use things like the instance ID as the key to just pull down all model elements from a view, for example. What we can then do is visualize the data and strip out data from um, assemble and, and, and sort of build out our spreadsheets, but then actually maybe run things like calculations within assemble within Excel and push that data back to assemble. So there's an update assemble button there as well. So any calculated fields that you might do in Excel, for example, you can push back into empty parameters that you've created within assemble. So it's really nice for, for, for doing many, many different tasks. Some things that customers have used this for recently is things like running, I mentioned about sustainability calculations and mapping data back into the, 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 um, the model and visualizing it. So that's, that's the type of thing you, you might want to be able to do. Um, but also just costing elements as well. So maybe you want to break down different elements into different um, cost fields or different zones, for example. Um, we can use lots of calculated fields here and push the results of those back into the model. So I really like this this function. Um, it's very, very popular with the customers um, and it's, it's really powerful in terms of what it's capable of doing. Kind of how I would kind of wrap this, this conversation up now um, comes around Power BI. So, so we've created this model within or created this set of views within the cloud we've taken the design models we've added extra data to them we've put costs against them we've added schedule data against them what we can then do using power bi is because we're a cloud-based solution we can link directly to a power bi dashboard and report on all of this data so any costs that are against the model we can track those costs against things like progress on site so if we have a live update from site where people are updating installation status for example we can see where we are in terms of the program and then start to see how much cost we've expent how much expenditure we've had and um, to date and get that as a kind of bird's eye view of the project so as as a kind of standard what we have is we've got two dashboards available and um, obviously they can be changed and tweaked and, and, and made uh, suitable for your own solution but what we have is um, a single project view and a multi-project dashboard view as well, which we make available for free as part of this to enable you to get this type of insight into your project. So we're just gonna move on to look at plan grid here now. And if we just move through a few slides here, what we'll see is where plan grid sits within our um, solution. So plan grid um, is very much a sort of simple powerful and effective site tool so when we move maybe to the build phase um, and we want to connect the workers on site to the to the office in a very you know 
a data efficient way and a work efficient way, we can do that using Plan Grid. Um, Plan Grid actually sort of sits, I would say, um, within the sort of project management, field collaboration areas, and um, also with some sort of quality and safety workflows and, and sort of commissioning for maybe snagging or, or inspections and things on site. Um, so the tool does have some sort of crossover with, with BIM 360 build in terms of the actual functionality. And what we would normally say is really, um, it comes down to an individual customer about what is probably going to be the best solution. So Plan Grid is a nice, simple, effective digital tool. It's a, it's a good first step on the ladder in terms of digitization, you know, taking paper-based um, activities and taking sort of manual processes and, and turning them into digital processes. It's very, very effective. What it doesn't have is a CDE. So it doesn't have a document management system within it. Okay, so if that's something that's needed, um, then obviously BIM 360 may be more suitable. There is the option to connect the two systems together, actually, in terms of um, ACC Connect, being able to connect docs to Plan Grid. So where we've got existing customers who want to move and, and start to use document management, that, that's not a problem. Um, but there is a bit of a, a sort of a difference in terms of the tools. And what we always say is we, we have a good session with any customers up front to discuss, you know, the requirements and the needs, how complex the requirements are maybe, um, and the digital, digital maturity of the actual company itself. And then we can sort of recommend probably a best solution or a best way forward. And, but there's always the option, you know, with ACC Connect to connect the two systems as well. So, so a little bit of crossover, but really um, both really good tools um, for different needs. So what we've got on the screen here now is just an example of the Plan Grid web interface. So you can see here what we have is the ability to so upload drawings directly into the cloud here. And um, so we can take um, PDFs um, and we can take maybe um, you know multi-page PDFs, upload those to the cloud using optical character recognition. What the software will then do is it will strip out things like the name and the number of the of the particular drawing. And then we can also add additional tags to the drawings as well to, to enable them to quickly be able to be accessed. So you can see in terms of versioning and version history, we have that within the system. Um, so that using optical character recognition, it can help with that version control and, and publication. So we can move back between versions of the different drawings. You can see there and actually do a compare between them as well if we want to. So you can see using the um, optical character recognition as well, it's not just limited to the actual um, title blocks. And so you probably just saw on the screen, type in the word door, for example, and what that allows you to do is search through any instance of the word door on any drawing within your entire project. So if you think you've got maybe a thousand drawings in a project, that's a really, really good search tool to have, okay? Um, so that's kind of what, what the fundamental platform has. It, it, it's a, you know, a, a drawing-based tool, which is looking at PDFs. We can publish Revit models to this as well. So if you do have a Revit model, we have an app, a plugin for Revit that enables you to publish directly from Revit. And that will help with instant scalable scalability of the actual uh, drawings themselves. So we don't have to calibrate the sheets to take measurements, for example. Um, but we can also bring the 3D model with us as well from Revit so and view that as well. So in terms of getting the data into the system, that's how we would work. It's obviously a mobile based tool. And so you can see here what we have is a list of projects that we're sort of eligible to look, look at or view. We have some on the device, which we've synced down to enable us to work directly. And we also have other ones that are in the cloud. As I go and access a project, for example, now it will prompt me to see whether or not I'm actually working on the correct version. And so the purpose of this is then to enable us to make sure that we've got the correct working version and version set of drawings and not just drawings, but maybe field reports, documents, tasks, things that have been flagged up within the product before we move out of the, the site cabin and away from our Wi-Fi. So we can be sure when we get to site, we've got the latest version of the drawings and the information as well. You can see here now we're just able to use some of those tags to, to drop into the different views. And also what we have is the ability to sort of quickly look at um, you know, hyperlinks and histories on drawings as well. So we can you know, quickly get around the, the documents and see what's within them. So any, any documents, so I mentioned we don't have a document management system within Plan Grid. We have got a documents repository or documents section where we can upload things like spec sheets and things like that as well. 
um, and put that data into the cloud and view it. Um, but it's not kind of like a CDE document management system. It's just a document repository that enables us to view that data. So really good access to the, to the platform. All of the different things that we have within the web are available within the mobile app, such as you can see the photograph functions um, and, and things like that. So a store of all the photographic information from the project. Um, and we can get into that all through the mobile app as well. So one of the main things that we might want to do with the tool here is, is look at the markup capability maybe. And so either as a personal markup or as a shared markup within the, the, the project, what I can do is actually get into a drawing. I can go and add information, markups to this, to this document. I can then make that personal to me as part of my own, um, my own markups or I can make that public. So for example, if I was a, maybe a, a site foreman or, or you know, a project manager, construction manager on the project, if I wanted to add information that I want everybody to see when they logged in and looked at the drawing, I can do that on a, on a sort of organization or a project wide level. And then they're, they're, everybody's going to see that same sort of information. Maybe we've got an area that's, you know, ready for ready for handover or ready an area that's, a, you know, phased completion of an area. We can highlight information on the project, um, which is that. But you can see all different types of functionality that we have as we as the videos play in there. So things like measurements, adding hyperlinks to a document, you know, uh, and hyperlinks to even like something like a 360 photograph we can do. Um, also on there, you probably saw photo tags, so we can drop a tag on, add a photograph to a specific location um, and make that available to anybody who's on this platform. Um, so they can see exactly what that area looks like or a defect that's been flagged up. Um, so we've got that there. Also um, tasks, so we can flag the tasks up on here as well, using any of these markup capabilities down on the right hand side. I just briefly touched upon before the compare drawings functionality, but what's really nice here is um, the ability to quickly overlay two documents. Now these could be, you know, the same drawing, you know, so we can see a different version between them and do this directly from the iPad. So we can quickly see how this lighting layout has changed, for example. Um, if the scales maybe change, not, not the scale, but maybe like the, the orientation of the, of the view, the, the viewports moved in AutoCAD, for example, we can realign these and view them as well uh, as overlays. And, but what we can also do is compare different sheets. So if we wanted to look at maybe um, a lighting layout versus uh, an HVAC layout, or HVAC versus steel layout, something like that. You can see we're able to compare different versions, align them, and then see the see how they actually compare. So we've got a clash there between a light fit and potentially and a, and and a, um, a, a, and, and some AC. So if we wanted to then notify somebody of that, we can go and take a screenshot, snapshot, send that directly back to them via email from the site, and obviously that's then recorded within our snapshot section on the app, so we can get back and see that information as well. So. Really nice functionality around that type of thing. Our project dashboard gives us a, um, a very quick update about anything that's going on within the, um, the tool. So you can see, for example, we can start to add things like um, milestones, completion dates. But what I really like is this recent activity feed. So anything that's going on, if we've got 100 users of PlanGrid on site, any photos, any tasks, uh, any checklists that are filled out, any markups that are created, um, as an administrator on the platform, I can get in and just very quickly see any recent activity um, that's actually happening there. PlanGrid does have some really good quality and safety management workflows. That could be in terms of something like tracking a task or an action on site, maybe a snag or a defect that's been raised, creating maybe a stamp on a drawing, taking a photograph and actually assigning that to an individual and, and tracking that through to completion. So we can do a similar thing with BIM 360 issues. Plan grid tasks are very similar to BIM 360 issues. And as you can see here, we've got the ability to view all of those different tasks on the device, maybe filter that by individual or group and track those through to actually um, resolution and also record things like root cause as well um, against those. So we can start to use analytics against them as well. But one of the big differences is the way that we handle forms and checklists. So you can see here, Whereas BIM 360 is more of a digital checklist environment, we, we do have that functionality in PlanGrid. However, we also have this smart PDF capability. And so you can imagine where we've got maybe a company with 100 types of forms that are A4 standard PDFs that, that people are used to filling out as paper-based systems on site. It can be very comforting and easy to adopt 
um, to take those PDFs, create or take those sort of paper PDFs, turn them into a smart PDF, and then actually use you know um, digital digital tools to fill them out and things like digital signatures, and then also maybe attach photographs and things against that checklist. So, so it's just a slightly different way of handling the, the checklist or form functionality between the two platforms, depending on obviously what's probably best for the particular needs of that, that particular individual or company. We do have an RFI capability as well within PlanGrid. Um, so any requests for information that are arising on site, we can um, mark up a drawing, create an RFI within the system, and then we can obviously track that RFI's uh, completion or, or, or the, 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 the answers that we obviously get for that RFI. We can, we can track that all the way through the process and with an RFI manager. So um, we have traceability about who has bowling court, for example, is one of, the, one of the things that is on there. So we can see who has an action against that particular um, activity. And um, very similar to that as well, we have a submittal tracking functionality as well. So we can start to see, you know, we can start to use um, uh, the submittals process. It's probably a more common process in the US, but it is something that's on BIM 360 build as well. But in terms of maybe getting answers to specification queries, maybe a particular type of tile material that you want to use or a spec item that you need to get confirmed, we can use a submittal tracking procedures for that as well. So, so there is some good tools in there for that. Finally, once this project is complete, we do have the ability to download all of this. So when we talk about things like the golden thread and having traceability and accountability throughout a project, what's very key then is for us to be able to download all of this information, all of the actions and communication that have occurred within the project and have that as an archive and that's available to us. So we can download all of those markups, all of those communications and keep them as a kind of living as built and a living copy of the data. So there's lots more information online available and um, I know the Man and Machine team are, are keen to talk to you about any of these things that we've discussed today. Um, so I'll thank you for that and um, we'll move to any questions.